Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to take a look at models. So really models are a very simple concept. They're just classes that contain the data. So this could come in many forms. You could get your data in the form of POCOs, which are just plain old class objects. You could get it from Entity Framework or possibly even Link to SQL, which is pretty much, I think is pretty much gone now uh, from any of the newer applications that might be developed. Uh, you might also get your data from a service, so like a web API. Regardless of where you get your data from though, I want to introduce to you a best practice. And a lot of businesses do this as a matter of course, regardless of whether or not it's even necessary, they do it anyway, just because it's a good business practice. And that is this thing called a view model. Now a view model in ASP.NET Core is not the same as you would find in WPF applications. The primary difference between a view model in ASP.NET Core and MVC is that the view model just strictly contains data for the view. Uh, in WPF, it's a little bit more interactive. View models are kind of that go between, uh, between a view and the model and kind of help you to manipulate and, and, and uh, decide whether or not to get your model data and kind of manage it a little bit. And that's a little different than what you get with an MVC application, where a view model is just strictly a container that is going to hold all of the data that is necessary for your view. So your POCOs and your entity frameworks and your data from a service, you're going to collect these classes and you're going to put those classes into a view model class. And then you're going to pass that view model class into the view. So you don't really want to necessarily directly put your POCOs, your entity framework classes, or your data from a service and push it right into your view. You really want to put it into a view model container and then pass that view model to the view. Let's hop into Visual Studio and let's take a look at an implementation of some models and a view model. So we've actually used a model previously when we were doing our first MVC application. And that was this bit of code right here where we had a contact class and contact object that we were filling in with some data here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and un, uh, I'm gonna comment this redirect route because that's not necessary anymore. And we're gonna reuse our contact class with, as a contact object and I'm going to go ahead and assign ID a value here. And in fact, I'm going to go to my contact class. I'm going to fix this to be Pascal casing because it. I know there's a lot of sticklers out there. So we'll do first name, last name. And I'm also going to do a remove and sort usings. So this is a POCO class. It's a plain old class object. And we stuck it underneath the models folder because this particular class is designed to contain the data. It's not a business logic class. It's strictly for the data itself. Now in our home controller, we're assigning values to the object, the contact object. So this is perfectly acceptable. You can have your controller classes um, actually do the assignment of data to your class objects, because that's really what the controller is for. It's the organizer, it's, it's the orchestrator. But this does lead to a question about the single responsibility principle, which some of you who are familiar with the solid principles might be wondering about, well, we're organizing our data, we're putting data and assigning it right here inside of our controller. And you would be right. It's a best practice to actually do your organization of your data or assigning your data to your classes through some other class. But that's really kind of more for an advanced um, demonstration than what we'd be doing here. And additionally, some of you might be already asking the question, well, what about entity framework? What about connecting to a database and getting the data from those classes? We will be talking about entity framework later on in this series because obviously getting your data from a SQL server is a very important concept, an important component to web application development. 
For right now, though, I just need to demonstrate to you that this contact class resides in our models folder, okay? And we're assigning data to it here. Now, let's say that we had another model. So I'm gonna go to add class, and I'm gonna go to server side class. And this is gonna be another very simple POCO class, but it's going to be a customer class. And the customer class, let's say it also has an ID and it has a string of customer name. And we'll also sort and remove. Okay, so we have a customer class and we have a contact class. Both of these are POCO uh, classes. And let's say that we had another, we had a customer class. We'll go ahead and create this now. So we'll do new customer and we'll assign its value. So we'll do ID uh, just to make sure we get a different value here. We do ID two and customer name is the company. Okay. So we have two classes and two objects that contain the data, but we can't pass along both of these two classes into our view method. The view method will only take one model object. So what we have to do is we have to put both of these classes into a view model. Now you could make a subfolder under the models folder, but I typically just go to my uh, application and create a new folder here called view models. And view models should probably be one word. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class in view models. And just a regular class. But what we tend to do is, as far as naming convention goes, is to use the controller name and the action, which is index. So we would want to do home index view model. Now you don't have to go by that standard. It's perfectly acceptable to use some other uh, naming convention, but this is typically what you'll run across is the controller name followed by the action name and then view model. So we'll go ahead and add that now inside of our view models folder. And now what we'll do is we need to bring in a using of our Contoso models because we're going to need to access the contact and customer classes. And we're just going to go ahead and add some properties on here, one of a contact, and we'll call this contact. And another one is going to be our customer, call it customer. And now these are actual properties on our view model. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove and sort and save. And now we have a home index view model that has two properties, one called contact and one called customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close out of this home, uh, home index view model. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a third class object here. So we'll do, uh, it's gonna be home index view model. And I need to bring in the namespace here. So we'll do control period using Contoso view models. And we're gonna call this just VM and we're going to assign it a new home index view model. And we're going to assign it for the contact. We're going to assign it our contact object, which is up here, which is our new contact that has my information in it. And then we're going to say customer equals the customer object that we have here, which has the company. Okay, so now that we have this view model, this home index view model, we can just simply pass the VM, the view model, into our view method, and that will actually pass along the contents of both of our contact and our customer objects using this vessel called a view model into our view. So let's go ahead and save this and now let's go to our view and I'm going to go ahead and change this so that now our model, which currently looks at 
uh, a model contact this is obviously not what we want anymore it's not going to be just getting passed in a contact it's going to be getting a view model because that's what we're passing in and it's in fact a home index view model so in our index we want to change this to contoso dot view models dot home index view model and now we also need to change here where we're using uh, the razor syntax in order to get first name last name and ID and you can see we get the red squiggly lines because it's no longer able to find the first name from this new this model that we've declared here so we have to go model dot contact oops it's supposed to be contact and remember we also fixed the syntax here for the first name and last name so you can see that once I fix that it is fine with the red squiggly line there you know where squiggly lines gone away so okay we'll do contact and this is last name and contact is ID oops actually it's supposed to be period there there we go and now the view is satisfied with what we've done, but now we want to bring in the data that we assigned here for the company. Okay, so we'll do we'll do a break. Just do a couple of them here, and then we'll do you work for model company. Oops, model customer, there we go. Okay, so we'll save that. And now let's go ahead and run our application. So it looks like I goofed here. I forgot to get another property. Let's go back here. I am sorry. I apologize to all those poor people out there that are gonna have to take an extra 20 seconds in this video to see customer name there we go that's what we were looking for not just customer we actually wanted to get customer name the property on that customer uh, property of the model so let's go ahead and save that and try running it again so there we have it now we have the data that comes from both of our model classes both our contact information which is just steve bishop and that my id is one as well as the the customer class that we use the customer object which contain the data of the company which was the name of the the customer name that we put on that customer class back here in our controller so hopefully you can see that using view models is very very important because it allows you to add as many additional items or additional classes that you need in order to render your view okay because your views are going to often need more pieces of information than just what the one class will provide now if you're trying to make a decision as to whether or not you should use view models for every time that you have a view i would just say err on the side of caution and always have a view model because you never know when a change is going to come down in the future and you're going to need to uh to have a view model and if the whole time your code has been not using a view model you're gonna to have to go and create that view model and refactor the rest of your code to now use a view model whereas if you just implemented a view model in the first place all you would have to do is go to your home uh, to your view model add the additional piece of information and then go right into your view and just put that information right into your view. So if I was to give you advice on whether or not you should use view models for every single instance I would say yes, the default should be yes. But again, it's certainly not required and some businesses don't like additional classes to be made if they're not important. Uh, so I could certainly understand that perspective. But anyway, there you go. There is what a model is. It's just in this case, we just use plain old class objects. And once again, we will be using entity framework at a later point in this course, as well as using a view model so that we can put additional pieces of information and add additional classes to the data that will be passed along to our views and then we can use right there inside of our view both pieces of information that were on that view model.
So anyway, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to my channel. That way you can get notifications every time that I put out new content, which I try to do a new video, one or two videos every week. Uh, and I try to release them either Sunday or Monday so that you guys have something to enjoy during your work week. Anyway, so once again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.